The Lord be with you. Also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other one also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? (coughs) Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. (coughs) Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful as your Father is merciful. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let me get a drink of water first. (coughs) May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I almost didn't have anything to offer today because we were without power for nine hours on Friday, but finally it came back up and the computer started to work. But in the meantime, I had looked up um, some interesting rules about movable and fixed feasts of the church. You see, the old book, the 1959 Book of Common Prayer, allowed the propers, that is, the readings for all saints, to be used on any weekday in the octave, that is, a week following. But it did require that the colic, the prayer for all saints, should be used every day for a week. Now, in 1985, that's that long ago, we brought out the Book of Alternative Services, and it said that the feast might be observed on the Sunday following, while its companion feast, All Souls, which is November 2nd, can be held on any convenient day in the week. Now, what all that reading caused does the world out there that surrounds us know or care about the rules regulating the festivals of the church? Because they certainly made a fuss over the postponement of Halloween. Uh, How many kids came to your house which night? Do you have lots both nights? No, I don't get anybody because I live down a long lane. But um, I have two grandchildren live in Point Claire. Uh, the younger one went out the first night and the older one went out both nights. <laughs> There's a saying that might seem a little trite that says, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. 
And so as I prepared this week to come here to St. Mary's to celebrate the holy mysteries of God with, with the flock as it gathered, I prayed as I have prayed in preparing for every Sunday for almost 60 years, gracious God, what part of the wonderful story of your love would you have me tell the people who will gather with me? Now, the last couple of years I face a little different situation because I'm a little more retired and I only fill in as required in the Laurentian Regional Ministry. So, although for 12 years since coming to the Diocese of Montreal, I was an intentional interim, which means I was a temporary shepherd to the fog. Now I'm not even a temporary shepherd, I'm just sort of a drop-in shepherd. Uh, I was assured that I couldn't parachute down through the roof here. Um, but I remember being here once before. And I was here very gladly because Ardeth had phoned and said, or put it on the website, she needed a celebrant for the 24th of February. And I jumped at the chance. Do you remember why? It was the 57th anniversary of my ordination of the priesthood, and I didn't have an altar that day, so I used yours. It was wonderful. Now, I don't know a great deal about the triumphs and the troubles and the struggles of the ministry here at St. Mary's and in the community around you. But as I prepared, there was a passage in the scripture assigned for today that literally hit me right between the eyes. I, I, I just knew that it could apply to almost any congregation in our turbulent and testing times as we go forward. So I'm going to read again a little bit of that passage from the Ephesians with, with some uh, interspersed comments. The writer says, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. Okay, that's the core of our identity. That's who we are. We are people who follow Jesus. And then the writer says, and your love towards all the saints. Yeah, that's what we do. We're professional lovers. We love people. We do things for people. That's our activity. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in our prayers. That's what we do across the diocesan cycle of prayers. We pray for all the congregations. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. Now, I know that tomorrow night there will be a study group, and I know that you gather for prayer, you gather for worship, uh, you gather all the time, and it's all to learn and grow in God's faith and in God's service. And the writer goes on, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, I love that expression, the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. And it is that hope that the mystery of the future will gradually become clearer to us as we place our trust in the God of all hope. That we will know what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. What is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. Well, commentators, those are people who study the scriptures all the time and in their original languages. They tell us there's no consensus as to to whom or by whom that letter was written, but that it fits into the period of the late first century when the inclusion of the Gentiles is established. In other words, the church as we know it, inclusive, welcoming, gathering everybody, okay, was already established, and that the expectation of Jesus' immediate return was beginning to fade. Maybe he meant something else when he said he was coming back. Maybe he meant it wouldn't be tomorrow. Now, like several letters of the New Testament, whether they're written by Paul or written later, Ephesians addresses the faithful as saints. I love the address in the letter to the Romans. It addresses us as called to be saints. No reference to the processes of selection or designation as who gets to be a red-letter saint, a capital S saint, if you wish, or even to the 
faithful departed, you know, those we known to God alone that we pray for, recalled in all souls, because the root, the root comes from a Greek verb which means this. It means something is set apart for God. We are all set apart for God and are thus sacred or holy. And that's supposed to apply to all of us as the letter is written to us. Now, the gospel passages for all saints in years A and C give us two different versions of the same story of Jesus at the seaside giving us the, what we call the Beatitudes. Now, <clears throat> most of us of a certain vintage probably remember having to memorize in uh, Sunday school, blessed are the poor in spirit for they shall see God, you know, all that. We, well, this year we read from Luke. And Luke has a decided bite to contemporary society because blessedness of poverty is balanced with woe to the rich. And the challenges to the faithful are starkly quite demanding. Give to anyone who asks. Love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Well, I lent a great deal of my salary to the pension fund, and if they didn't give me something in return, I couldn't eat. We're called to an exemplary life as a strong witness to the world around us. It is that factor, this witness of exemplary lives, that has given us the calendar of the saints, although none of them was a perfect human being, believe me. I was chatting earlier about, <clears throat> there are several saints Davids, one of them was a bishop in Wales, but my namesake David, you know, the great king of Israel, he was a bit of a rascal as well. Now, I have my own lists that I hold up as saints and those I commemorate on All Saints Tide. Uh, some are members of the family. I remember my dear grandfather who used to dangle me on his knee and recite the poems of Henry Drummond and uh, uh, also uh, Robert Service. Uh, but grandfather was a Presbyterian minister. He didn't believe in transferring feasts except for Christmas and he wouldn't keep on the 25th. He kept on the Sunday nearest because keeping Christmas on the feast was a Romish invention. Uh, well. We've learned since then, I hope. <laughs> Who are your saints? I'm sure you have some. I, I kind of, I didn't really chide the early congregation because they, I, maybe they believe that Thomas Cramner should be a saint because he translated the Latin mass into the colloquially English of the 16th century. In other words, it was groundbreaking that long ago that people could worship and pray in the words that they would use in their home and on the street. I'm not sure that we're using 16th century English as we talk to one another today. Now, among the peculiar celebratory acts that could be held in this season, in the 1962 prayer book, is one for the founders, benefactors, and missionaries or other worthies of the church in Canada. Now, I've been in ministry since the 1960s, and I wonder how many places, there are certainly lots in the Diocese of Ontario where I was ordained, we had a vision. The suburbs were burgeoning. And our vision was that if a thousand new houses went up somewhere, there would be 2,500 church-going Anglicans and there would be 2,600 church-going United Church members, so we both rushed in and built churches, usually on streets that we couldn't find our way around. All Saints' Tide sometimes causes us to glory in the past, but I think it's really a call to the future, which, though always a mystery, must always be open to hope. What new ways are there unfolding 
that we might offer our identity as faithful followers of Jesus and as our, of our work as servants of God's people that might lie before us. For myself, I rejoice. I'm now part of a new experiment called the Laurentian Regional Ministry. At the moment, we have two full-time priests and one curate who's now a priest and a few old folks like me who fill in from time to time. But we're able to continue a vital ministry in 10 churches spread across the Laurentian region by giving everybody gets a service either at 9 o'clock or at 11 o'clock. And sometimes those of us take services drive 50 miles in between. But nonetheless, I think, I wonder what new patterns of ministry could merge here in the wilds of the West Island. Who knows? Let's update that letter to the Ephesians. Here at St. Mary's and all around us, may the eyes of our hearts be enlightened, that we might know the hope which God has called us. May we grasp what are the riches of God's glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. Amen.